Ladies and gentlemen, Bert. Bert has never been on this stage before. Bert himself is a first timer. And Bert, Bert, he was an acrobat and was standing on his head. Bert doesn't have an act. Some of you have an act. Some of you have an act you've brought on this stage. Cheer if you've performed in this show on this stage. See, Bert, it's, it's not that scary. Lots of people have ideas. You can, you can do anything you want. You sit here and watch. I'll explain. All right, Bert, you stay right there. You see, Bert, you guys, doesn't matter what you do, you get on a stage, and, and if, you, if you didn't cheer, I hope you do choose to get on the stage for you, um, not for me. Though it's funny, once you get up here, even if you're singing someone else's song or reciting someone else's poem, you're doing it with your voice. It's kind of strange. Your voice. I have seen people come up here and shout out their words and the audience gets it. And I've seen the other people get up here and shout out their words like this moment where no one really knows where the heck I'm going. That's okay for Bert and for you. I'm going to explain in a second. But we're dealing with the fact that we need a common language. You know? What I, what I said isn't as important as what I meant to you. It's important that we make that connection. Because if we don't, we're lost. I mean, it's just me talking to myself. Last week, I had an object lesson in this. I mentioned that I was going to be going and performing for some, some kids. And it was going to be a really tough room. And it was a literal truth that I didn't share any common language with these kids. They didn't speak my language. I didn't speak their language. And so right from the get-go, I was going to be with them for an hour and had no way to share my ideas. And then the, there were some of the kids who did speak my language, but they had a metaphoric problem with my language. You may notice a certain thing about my voice. It's coming out of a, an adult, biologically speaking. <laughs> and imagine this being an adult, biologically speaking. I'm an authority. You know this, I know this. They didn't know this. What they saw was they saw the guy standing there about to start talking. And I realized that we were not going to succeed in communicating. And so I made a really daring choice. I gave up the one thing that would give me any authority. And I walked in and I spent an hour with kids without saying a word. Now, quick disclaimer. If you're not trained in the classic art of mime, I don't recommend you do this. I also think, and you probably know this from knowing me at all, that silence is never a good choice. Make as much noise as you possibly can with your life. But I had made a decision and I had to commit to it. So I walked in the room and they figured it out almost instantly. The little murmur of, it's a mime. He's not going to talk. He can't talk. Is he mute? And at that moment, they did exactly what you guys do. They threw me so far under a bus that I could hear the squeak of the tires. And of course, in their case, it was like a school bus, right? <laughs> but then something marvelous happened. I went there gleefully. I went there joyously. I just like I learned to do it here. I, okay, we're going under the bus together. That's where I'm going. And they all of a sudden realized as a group that they had sent me there. And so they encouraged me back out from under it. And that's when something amazing happened. All of a sudden, the kids started leading a story. It wasn't a complex story. I was a, an idiot with a suitcase full of stuff, and I would pull things out, and funny things would happen. And sometimes we'd do something longer, and sometimes they would say, go to the suitcase. And it was this thing where we were telling a story together. And it was completely driven by their voices. And whenever it got out of hand, something weird happened. There were kids that had sat in the back row because they were too cool. They had moved to the outside and they were telling the kids, no, 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 sit down, be quiet, shout with them. They actually got to the point where they were chanting things together, like on a one and a two and a one, two, three, do the trick. They were chanting that together. I didn't tell them to, no one told them to. Something amazing happened. Now, after the performance, I went, I talked to the director of this facility, and they told me those kids that were on the outside, that they were the ones that, that they were so amazed were involved in this process. They were the ones that act up. They were the ones that act out. And in this organization, what their goal was to get these kids to be quiet, to calm, to settle down, which is an authoritarian way of saying, shut up. It is. And it's ugly. 
be good. It's terrible. These kids are going to act out. And I had the epiphany, and I admit freely that I shared it. I probably shouldn't have, but I did. And that was simply this. Kids act out. It's what they do. And they had never been in a situation, they had never been presented with an opportunity to find out what happens when their acting out becomes a part of a creative process, when they got to build something instead of just kicking it over. The problem children in the room became the roustabouts, which is a thing I'm sure you're familiar with around here. <laughs> it was the most magical thing I've ever seen, and it's built on an idea that I am now, I'm now actively pursuing in our outreach work, which is giving kids a chance to have a voice. And more importantly, I want to have it here too. I want everyone to have a voice in this thing. We've built something beautiful here, and I've been taking pieces of, with, of it with me, whether it's my ability to survive a heckle, my ability to get under a bus comfortably, <laughs> or my ability to say, what do you think, and listen to you when you tell me. I think it's the most important thing we can do, and I think there is one great tribute that I can do for this idea. I should shut the hell up and we should start this show. <laughs> And because I've got to say it, welcome to the open stage.